Well, good day, Tubes. How's she hanging? So, since we're into uh, doing some bees wax so much, we're gonna have a quick look here at the Busy Bee Tool Flyer. I only get this maybe once, yeah, spring 2018, so I only get it like maybe three times a year. And uh, this is uh, some higher end kind of nice stuff, still made in China stuff, but China's making some good stuff, and this is some of the good stuff. Uh, so tools, now this is like, tools like my big drill press and stuff. So we're going to crack her open here and have a look. We'll look at a little bit of everything here. That's pretty cool. It's uh, very expensive. Some of it's very expensive stuff. Uh, you know, you could probably buy a really, really good whatever brand milling machine for probably three or four times that amount, but uh, you know, this is not a little more than entry level kind of stuff here. So, anyways, let's uh, crack this open and have a look. It's a little bit of glare here, but we'll try to we'll try to keep away from that. All right, after we're uh, after we're done, I got to show you something cool I've done. Hopefully, with this old Tim Hortons lid here, one milk, half sugar. That's good stuff. So there's something underneath it that I gotta show you but we'll leave that for after um, but anyways let's get into the busy bee I just got a little bit of wax to do here I'm cleaning up so between that we're looking at this so I've always wanted a bandsaw but just don't have room bandsaws are pretty darn handy for a lot of things but anyways uh, ooh, that might be too hot until we get a little bit in the bottom there it uh, Sounds like oil frying. Um, so, got some little work lights. Try to get away from this glare off the light. Planer, lithium ion bandsaw. That's pretty cool. Mm, routers, nailers, sandery things, routers, saw dewies. Little compressor. That's cool. And stuff. This isn't all the stuff they have. The store is actually freaking phenomenal. The stuff they do have there, but this is stuff that's on sale, right? So, drills. Good for drills. Nice planer. What is that? Lithium ion cordless plunge cut circular saw. Okay. Oh, we even got hedge trimmers. Wow, DeWalt hedge trimmers. Hitch trimmer, hitch trimmer, hitch trimmer, blower, blower, chainsaw, even Makita. That's kind of cool. Another chainsaw, DeWalt, power, back, or battery powered, 20 volt maximum. Huh. This one's 18, 18 volt. A lawnmower, even. Wow. I seen it all. I think when I seen this winter, they come out with a snowblower that was battery powered. Now, there's something I would really like to get back into. I did some lathe work, turned a few baseball bats and stuff, basically, in school. And it was always fun, but it's really messy. Uh, fairly cheap, though. You know, it's not a very big one, but you can make some, some little things out of it. Maybe bowls or whatever, but you got to get into all the tools, though, too. That's what's really expensive, so. It's always been kind of cool, though. You can make spindles and stuff or whatever have you. Ooh, what is that? Turnmaster handle cutters. Oh, I guess you can make your own tool kind of out of it. Round French mushroom. That's kind of cool. With all the turning tools and stuff. Ooh, pepper mill, mill mechanism bronze finish. That's kind of cool. You make your own pepper mill. See? You need a lathe, turn the pepper mill thing, and then you can make a pepper mill. That's kind of cool. If you like pepper. If you don't like pepper, well, sorry. <laughs> now my fingers don't work. I want to turn the page on me. Page 8. Oh, table saws. I always wanted a nice big table saw, too, but again, I don't have room for that. Table saws are pretty handy, too. You know, that's a fairly beefy one there. 2500 bucks Comes with a nice extra stand and everything, but uh, I don't do much of that. So whatever I can, unless you're ripping boards or something or cutting lengths of plywood, you know, I, you can do that with pretty much a circular saw, which I do have. Push stick, save your fingers so you don't end up, you know, like like, like this kind of thing. That's <laughs> fingerless. There's all your blades. I actually did get 
It was one of these tornado blades, and it was from my metal chop saw, metal cutoff saw, and I didn't like it. It didn't last very long. They're metal cutting saw blades. These blades feature a special tungsten carbide teeth with hardened steel inner plate for precise and cool cuts every time. It worked good for about the first 10 cuts, and after that I seen the sparks come in. I'm like, oh, that's not good. So, and it was 99 bucks, I guess. Roughly, it's a 14 inch, so yeah, it wasn't great, crazy on it. There's some more band saws. Sweet. Big ones. Oh, 18 inch wood metal band saw, variable speed. I like that. But that's probably a fairly big unit, as I say, 195 kilograms it weighs. Woo wee. So that would be heavy. There's some planers and some oscillating vertical spindle sanders disc belt sanders cool planers i love planers we had one at the high school man it started up it sounded like a jet engine it was so cool but that was many years ago uh mortise machine tilting head hmm. oh here's all your vacuum dust collecting stuff we don't really need to look at that too much i guess Heavy duty air cleaner with LED f LED filter with a lead filter. That's great. So it filters lead particles in. No, I'm just kidding. Um, dust pan cleaning stuff. Oh, here's all your elbow fittings and stuff for your dust connector stuff. Reducer dust hoods. I don't really need to look at all that. Ooh, air compressor. Compressor, vertical cast iron, 60 gallon. Air delivery CFM at 40 psi 11.5. Air delivery CFM at 90 psi 10.2. Ooh, that's not super great, but it's good for a little shop, I guess. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's just locations. There's some bench vices, woodworking vices. Sweet. Oh, sharpening system. Ooh, what does this do? No jigs required, just select your angle and sharpen, adjustable top tool rest. Oh, you guys can't see for the glare, sorry. Powerful one fifth horsepower motor. Very cool sharpening. What is it for though? Leather hone kit tempered tempered glass wheel. Well, wow. leather honing discs. Sharpening system, but I think it's for like chisels and stuff. I want one something something good for sharpening knives. Good knife sharpening, like a diamond thing, and then you, you hit it with a leather a couple times, and it's like sh shaved with it then after, right? But uh, anyway, so we got some clamps, some F style welding clamps. Really sweet. Drill Doctor, I think that's the same one I've got. Yeah, three quarter inch. Yeah, that's a good Drill Doctor. It's nice, it works nice. And it's really fast, too. Forstner bit set. Automatic wood project clamps. Ooh. Flexible shell. Oh, cool. Sign pro. That's neat. Make your own sign deweys. That's cool. Probably need a router or something for that. And drill 90 plus. That's neat. Some bits and stuff. What is this? Pocket screw kit. Hmm. Nice. Oh, here's, they've always got router bits in here on sale like this. All kinds of different things. But I don't have a router, so there's no point in me looking at these. Oh, lots more bits, all neat shapes and stuff. Pretty cool. That's kind of neat, locks them together. Sweet. There's a whole kit of them, 70, 70 piece master router bit set for $315. Can't really tell what's in there, but there's quite a few of them. Oh, there's a professional diamond stone set. Yeah, diamond sharpening solutions. Ooh. Ooh. Might have to learn how to do that. Yeah, nothing like a sharp knife. A lot better than a doll knife. So we got some more polishers, sanders, nailers, and paint brushy things. There's all your fluidy stuff. 
beeswax polish. What? Jeez. There's a store over here that sells beeswax candles. Not quite like what I'm doing. Like they have some really big ones, like the size of this this thing here, and uh, they have different sizes, different thickness. So they had one over there that was about this width, which is if I can give you an idea. That's probably about six to eight inches, and it was quite a bit taller. It's two hundred and forty-nine dollars. <laughs> Like, wow, but they had a wick in that thing that was like freaking huge. They must have like, you know, woven a bunch of those little guys together or one great big fella or like a piece of rope almost. But anyways, grease gun push type, sweet. Wouldn't hold much in there though. How many times would I have to fill that up when I grease the backhoe? Holy cow, the backhoe alone, backhoe attachment uses a tube of grease on, it, on its own. <laughs> so, we're almost to the end here. Oh, there's a little drill press, 14 inch. Pretty good drill press. I, I've, you know, something's going on with it, but it uh, it's always had. Well, for a while, it's had a thing where you start drilling, and you can see your piece moving like this. It's almost like the tapery thing, or whatever that thing is called, is like bent. But I've replaced it, and it's still doing it. So I don't know. Don't understand. Automatic center punch. <laughs> Punched. Ooh, 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 that would be nice. But again, no room. Beam compass, router bit, depth gauge. I don't see anything I need here. Except maybe that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't need that. Anyways, there we go. That was pretty cool. Busy bee. Busy bee wax. Sweet. So, anyways, um, let's have a look at this Horton's lid here. I'll show you what we got going on here. I'm going to have to put you on the tripod, though. Okay, this is something that I have worked on for a wee while. And why, I don't know. I just got into this uh, molding stuff, you know, and it was kind of fun. So I'm like, hey, I wonder if this will work. So <laughs> I tried a, <clears throat> a test, and I just did the name, and it worked pretty good. But now I have used, I well, this uh, name I did, it wasn't in beeswax. It was in uh, cons no, construction glue, uh, wood glue. <clears throat> I had to uh, fix some of our chairs upstairs. They were getting kind of wiggly, so... I got a, a jar of wig, 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 wig glue, yeah, wood glue, and uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to mold the inside of this lid, and I did. <laughs> and uh, so that's dried wood glue, and it's been about three weeks, so I just started, you know, pouring it in, pouring it in, pouring it in, letting it smooth out, and then just kind of did all the inside, so it's not super thick, but this stuff's pretty cool. It turns into, like, plastic almost, and it's kind of flexible, but... It's, it took forever to dry because it was so so thick there, but I think it's white here now, but I think that's because of the, uh, it's starting to let go. So we're going to pull this off. Our donor, a little mold guy here. And see if we got a sweet impression of a lid underneath it. I mean, kind of cool. It's not really stuck hard, it's just i got to kind of break it free. Oh, maybe this stuck hard. Hopefully it's dried. Actually dried. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Oh, that is sweet. This stuff is weird. It's almost like a plastic. It's not really glue. That is pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Let's put her down on something so you can get a good contrast of it. So that was about three weeks drying this thing. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> I must say, I really like that. I see a couple of bubbles there I got in it, but that's kind of cool. <laughs> oh man, wood glue. So it's, you know, it's, it's hard. It's like hockey puck hard kind of thing. But man, the detail that's in it. Let's see if we can get you in here real good. Put my hand behind it so it's not so clearish. The detail's pretty freaking nice. Flip her open and have a drink there, bud. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's too bad it took so long, though. Three weeks until it was finally, like, dry looking. And it was on a little little heating source, actually, down in my garage where my little laptop sits. The little power box. I had it sitting on there and kept rotating it. And it kind of heated it up, I guess, and helped, helped clear it out. So I don't know why I made that. It was just kind of cool. So, yeah, that was pretty sweet. 
Anyways, that's about it for today. Just got one other little story for you. Um, today, in my garage down there, I worked on the 110 TLB and changed the hydraulic system oil in it, hydraulic fluid and filters, and there's an internal filter that's a cleanable screen one filter. So I did it too. It was, it was a little bummed, but I noticed the last month I've been having problems with it kind of driving and I was kind of wondering if maybe the filters were getting a little clogged and they needed redone so plus I checked the fluid the other day and it's it's it was it was needing some anyway so I added a liter just to get me going of the fluid of the new stuff and then um, I uh, changed it today so um, it was quite a job it's a, a lot of containers to try to find and and container all the fluid because it's like well it wasn't full but I still got out uh, my black oil pan filled that twice and almost a half and I can't remember how much that holds but that's got to be at least 20 25 liters and I think it holds it has got to be more than that 25 it's probably 30 liters and it holds 37 altogether so I was down quite a bit and uh, there is a leak underneath which is really up high in the front casing somewhere I don't know if it's got a crack in it or whatever or some seals leaking way up but it's uh, pretty much split the tractor to fix it so I don't think I'll be doing that anyways uh, if we wanted to actually fix it and stop it leaking we'd have to probably send it to the dealership and get them to tear it apart because they're the professionals of that so uh, there's also a couple other weird things too I noticed some of the hard lines underneath that go uh, run underneath the belly of the tractor and stuff and uh, uh, then they turn and go under the tractor and then over to the loader controls there uh, a couple of them <clears throat> for some reason looks like they've moved a bit and they were touching and kind of like rubbing together so I'm like ooh so I split them apart and looked I'm like oh there's a flat spot there that's not good <laughs> that's not good at all so they weren't leaking but um, uh, they were definitely uh, touching and rubbing so I split them apart as best I could and I cut some old garden hose rubber garden hose and kind of wedged them in between there so hopefully it'll make like a little cushion there and it won't uh, kind of rub through but uh, if it does, I guess I'll have to get lines replaced, so that's going to be freaking wicked expensive, I would imagine. So, but uh, anyways, yeah, that's what I was working on today and the last little while. And it also needed an engine oil change too, so I dumped that out as well. So it was uh, it was due for that too. So uh, 2,700 hours on it, and it's a 2005. If you want to know the year, if you didn't know that. So, but uh, anyways, uh, yeah. So I guess that's it for today. Uh, not too much else going on. I'm just gonna be uh, melting some more of this grimy looking stuff and uh, putting her through the screen filter thing which I got back here and uh, we should be good so I'm just about up to where it gets hot here now and uh, yeah this is pretty dirty stuff so we're gonna have to uh, clean it out but uh, the next couple of days or whatever we'll do another video and uh, pull this one out this candle out that was our last one and uh, start one of these other ones here we've got uh, basically one two three four five six left unless I find some more molds and uh, get some more in so but uh, anyways that's it for today thanks again for watching and catch you all later